Good evening. I am Mayor Nicole LaChapelle, and thank you for tuning in to my virtual 2021 State of the City. The ravages of COVID-19 have shown a bright spotlight on issues that we've known existed long before the pandemic. With new urgency, we are having long overdue conversations about food and housing security, education, the fragility of child and healthcare systems, harm reduction strategies, internet access, and government efficiency. Tonight, I'd like to focus on where these conversations have led us so far in East Hampton. First and foremost, I want to stress that COVID-19 is a public crisis not yet over. We have lost so much and so many in the past year. And while relief is coming, we are not yet at the finish line. I implore you, do not let your weariness of this pandemic lower your guard. Please stay safe by wearing your mask and keeping social distance. People's lives depend on it. Throughout this pandemic, with the ensuing closures and quarantines, the city of East Hampton has successfully preserved continuity of core city services. Aided by federal funding, we've secured PPE and testing for city staff, as well as virtual platforms for public access to meetings. We have shifted key public services online. We've enlarged the Dropbox at City Hall and utilized electronic billboards and Code Red to get urgent information out to the public. Even with the federal dollars, the delay of the fiscal year 2021 budget and expected drops in local revenue are looming factors. This year, we must tighten our belts out of an abundance of caution while supporting long-term city projects. In December, I sent my annual budget letter to city departments and instructed them to cut 2.5% from last year's budget without cutting or laying off staff. COVID also exposed troubling vulnerabilities in housing security, prompting us to study housing needs, affordability, and supply. In response to this crisis and with the help of CPA monies, we created a new emergency rental assistance program. Renters who are at least one month late on their rent or are at the immediate risk of becoming behind in their rent may be eligible for $3,000 in aid from this new fund. In addition, East Hampton Senior Tax Write-Off Program starts July 1, 2021. I am thankful that our smart fiscal planning has paid off and is helping East Hampton to ride out the storm of COVID. Even with uncertainties, we continue to see growth. I am proud to have secured millions in grants for East Hampton over these last three and a half years. And we're seeing those investments come to fruition. This growth has also served as a prescient buffer against external factors that might otherwise have tanked our local economy. We have used cannabis impact fees to offset the effect of this new industry on the city while making strategic investments to bolster education, public safety, and government efficiency. We've gifted $10,000 to the Emily Williston Memorial Library to further support their community literacy efforts focused on youth wellness. We have replenished and repaired outdated equipment for the East Hampton Fire Department. And we are digitizing our city records, both historical and operational for remote access. Meanwhile, other major development projects are moving ahead on schedule. The first building in the One Ferry Street project is already open and occupied. The public benefits around the project, like traffic improvements and outdoor promenade space, are near completion. River Valley Co-op is on schedule to open this summer, bringing union jobs to the city. And the construction on our new pre-K-8 school is currently running on time and on budget. 
An equitable, locally driven economy was always our path forward. And that will sustain us in the post-COVID world. To that end, we've created two small business grants with public and private funds. I'm working hard to leverage new state and federal recovery dollars for bread and butter programs. Specifically, I'm aiming to use stimulus money to unlock affordable housing opportunities, small business support, better roads, and more jobs to improve the quality of life in East Hampton as we emerge from the pandemic. Hand in hand with smart development, we must address the tangible impacts of climate change and the health of our buildings. To that end, we have contracted with an energy performance service company to perform an industry grade audit to evaluate our current buildings and to make targeted upgrades to address air quality and circulation. The contract includes a solar survey to identify potential location where we can put solar to the city's best advantage. These investments also make long-term fiscal sense, particularly during a time of economic uncertainty, as we seek to hedge against increasing energy costs. Our best plans and developments continue to be shaped by input from our residents. This input directs spending to sustainable reflections of our community values. Our arts visioning, open space plan, award-winning downtown strategic plan, housing needs and production plan were all developed with resident participation. That helps us align our community values with municipal operations and investment. Going forward, more public input is needed for our local recovery plan to bolster our hospitality, makers, and creative economies. In a time with high unemployment, as side ventures are becoming primary income sources, I'm particularly excited about the work we're doing here through Blueprint East Hampton. The program supports and fosters side hustles and kitchen businesses, otherwise known as micro enterprises. We're currently using grants from the National League of Cities to secure resource partners, guidance, and funding for informal entrepreneurs. By actively supporting businesses to join the formal economy, we are opening wider avenues for our local commerce scene to attract customers from across the region. Blueprint East Hampton has already led to partnerships with state and national organizations to equip talented but under-resourced individuals in East Hampton with tools and capital to change the arc of their lives. To best recruit innovators, the city is working with national nonprofits and the Massachusetts LGBT Chamber of Commerce to run a community business academy with rising tide capital. Check out BlueprintEastHampton.com to use our business resource guide, interactive online resource navigator, and entrepreneurship evaluation and findings report on our local innovation landscape. From my very first State of the City address, you have heard my commitment to transparency and accessibility. To me, that is about tearing through the red tape we're so used to in government that often builds barriers and perpetuates bias. But making government more accessible is just one element of countering historic discrimination and bias against black, indigenous, and people of color. After engaging the Department of Justice in a citywide intervention in 2018, East Hampton's Community Relations Committee was formed, focused on bringing folks together to counter systemic bias and find spots of common ground. On June 3, 2020, I kneeled in acknowledgement of the grief of long-standing racial inequity, violence, and trauma. That same day, I signed the Mayor's Pledge created by My Brother's Keeper under the Obama Foundation. As directed by that pledge, we are reviewing use of force policies and with public input, we are re-envisioning police work to build upon authentic public trust. I fully know that this process has been fraught with high emotion and sharp words. Given the need and rightful calls for change, I have invited back the Department of Justice, Community Relations Service, 
to East Hampton to help us navigate an effective, fair route forward. They serve as an independent party for communities in conflict by mediating disputes and enhancing community capacity to prevent and resolve future conflicts on their own. If we want to address the bedrock of racism, it will take consistent, facilitated, trust-building work to reimagine the future. The Community Relations Service will help us in this pursuit. I want to stress that the fight for equity is not an isolated priority, but rather it is a central guiding principle in all that I do. From rooting out bias in our departments, increasing fiscal transparency, to supporting youth wellness, to creating financial assistance for those so often excluded from traditional seed capital. I am working to counter systematic discrimination, not just through a symbolic gesture, but securing real funding and crafting successful initiatives to build wealth and opportunity in East Hampton. This work will remain ongoing for as long as I am your mayor. It is and will be based in good faith partnerships and a humble willingness to learn and grow both personally and as an accountable leader. To that end, I will bring forth a series of funding requests to City Council to invest in what is clearly urgent, such as intensive anti-racism training for all department heads, members of the City Council and School Committee. I will request funding to complete a long overdue update of our ADA plan and to hire a licensed social worker to coordinate and augment harm reduction and social services out of the health department. In the spirit of transparency, I am seeking funding for software more conducive to multilingual translation and closed captioning for email, text, and public meetings. And related to that, I'm asking for funding for a public process consultant to review internal processes and public meetings for efficiency and inclusiveness. I will also ask City Council to fund a feasibility study examining the ways to make a permanent affordable housing trust inclusive of rentals and robust first time homebuyer programs. I will also ask City Council to fund a feasibility study examining ways to make permanent affordable housing trust inclusive of rentals and robust first time home buyer options. Additionally, I will ask for funds to do a holistic review on the true impacts of cannabis in our city and how to counter those impacts. I will ask City Council to join me in prioritizing infrastructure needs specific to creating multiple shovel-ready projects so that we can access and leverage future federal funding. We can look forward to these exciting developments while acknowledging that the trauma, fear, and anxiety of last year remains a tremendous burden and weight on us all. As we prepare for the coming year, more changes in our everyday life is all but certain. What matters most is that we follow the example of our incredible first responders and frontline workers. And even when dogged by exhaustion and uncertainty, we remain committed to helping each other. So many times in the past year, I've thought of this quote from Mr. Rogers. He said, when I was a boy, I would see scary things in the news. And my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people helping. In East Hampton today, we are not only helping each other survive, we are helping each other plan and prepare for the known and unknown challenges coming towards us. We are helping each other learn, helping each other examine and challenge bigotry and hate, helping each other to hang on, helping each other to prosper, and helping each other reimagine and reinvent what is possible in the years ahead. Regardless of agreeing or disagreeing, the last year has shown us we are clearly stronger together. Thank you for the honor of being your mayor. Please stay safe.